Hello everybody, this is my professional briefing for approaching junctions turning left. So um, this is classed as pretty much lesson two, so I'm going to call it lesson two. Um, you would have had a controls le lesson um, just to tell you about all of that about the car. Um, just to literally say about all of the controls and steering wheel, blah, blah, blah. And then lesson one was moving off and stopping. So obviously I've made a video about this already. So this is the official lesson two after the student knows how to move off and stop. Um, then they're going to be learning how to turn left. So lesson two. So this is a major to minor left turn. OK, so this is the warning sign that you might get it. This is the main flowing road. And then this is the road that comes up and has to give way on this occasion here. So this is called the minor road and this is called the major road, like a flowing road. This is the moving road and that's the one that stops. So this turn here, major to minor, you're turning left in. It's your priority over cars to turn in because you're on your left side of the road here. And then as you turn in again, you're on the left side again uh, as you go in. So over cars that are coming down, you've got priority to turn left and people coming out here shouldn't affect you because they're turning left and turning uh, to their right. So your priority over cars to turn left here. You're going to have to be very careful about bikes coming up and undertaking you. So do be careful of bikes because in the highway code, they have been given uh, priority here um, to go straight on. I need to make another video about that. There's a nice picture in the highway code right at the beginning about this. Um, but be very careful of a bike undertaking you to go straight on here. OK, and also pedestrians crossing. I have made another video about that, so you may have to stop here and let a pedestrian cross the road. Again, there is another video about that. But OK, so so far the student would have learned a system called mirror signal manoeuvre. And if you're following these lesson plans, you would see that in moving off and stopping. They learn mirror, signal, manoeuvre. Now, manoeuvre is a bit vague, um, so we're going to now be getting rid of the manoeuvre part completely and um, replacing it with position, speed and look. So instead of mirror, signal, manoeuvre, you will now have mirror, signal, position, speed, look. And this is the most important system that you're going to be learning, really, because it's for everything turning left major to minor, turning right major to minor, coming up to a T-junction major to minor, a uh, minor to major, sorry, <clears throat> coming up to a crossroads, coming up to a roundabout, coming to, up to any complex junction. So mirror signal position speed look, the MSPSL routine is incredibly important. Um, I really try and make my students understand that if they can learn this system off by heart, then they're going to be a really good driver. It is really as simple as that because you're not going to miss anything. So coming up to a left turn. Now, of course, depending on your speed, this is going to start earlier if you're going faster. But let's just say it's a completely town situation, very normal, sort of 20 to 30 um, area. Then you're going to be starting this process um, around about eight to 10 car lengths away, as long as there's no other junctions to make it look confusing that you're going into the wrong another turn. OK, because your signal should be signaling only for the turn that you're going into, not before a previous one. OK, so um, mirror signal manoeuvre is going to start in the same way that you recognise it from your previous lesson. So you're going to go interior mirror and left mirror to approach a junction on the left side, major to minor. And for the same reasons. So you're going to check the interior mirror to see the distance and speed of the person behind you because it is a flat glass mirror. It shows you the truth. Then you're going to check your left mirror to see if there is any vehicle or anything on the left that is going to prevent you from turning left, i.e. the bike that I was telling you about. So mirrors to the left, interior and left. When I was taught um, in instructor college, uh, where I learned in Bristol, um, we called them boy on bike, so Bob. So you're looking for Bob. <laughs> I get ridiculed for that by <laughs> it's old school, but look for Bob. <clears throat> so interior mirror and left mirror uh, to uh, check the people behind and look for Bob. Um, as you're coming up, you've done your mirrors. If it's safe to do so, and you've realised that there's no risk in danger or very, very low risk in danger, because and no one's going to get hurt, you'll then get a signal to the left to show everybody what you are going to do. All right. 
Then your position stays the same as a normal driving position in most cases, unless there's parked cars um, <clears throat> or potholes actually as well. But position and if it's all look, looking good is still a meter away from the curb or whatever is on the left side. So let's just pretend there's no parked cars or anything. So it's position stays the same, meter away from the curb. Then the speed comes down to a suitable speed to be able to turn the corner. If you're in a town and you're doing this normal left turn in a town, then it's highly likely that you're going to be using second or first to be able to turn a corner like this. Pretty much does depend on how bendy this turn is. If it's quite bendy and normal, as I like to call it, then you could potentially go around in second. If it's really, really sharp, then you could go down into first gear and then take the turn, depending on the situation of how sharp it is. So that would be your gear there. So position, meter away, speed down. So foot brake first, if you're in gears two to six, and then you're gonna change gear to the suitable gear for how bendy this section of uh, curb is. Then you're gonna have a very good look, yeah, for all of the reasons why we said before, a double check, is there a bike? And now you're gonna look in to see if there's pedestrians and if there's any parked cars in here. That's very important because if you turn in and you haven't really been able to see because there's bushes or things in the way, then you're gonna come up if there's a parked car in here, that could be very difficult because as you're coming in, you may have to stop straight away. And because if there's a car coming, you'd have to give way to them behind the parked car. And then when they're gone, you overtake the parked car as a separate item. Let's pretend that there is no cars around. All right, so it's mirrors to the left, signal to the left, position doesn't change from a meter away from the curb, speed down with the foot brake, gear down into the suitable gear for the bendiness of the curb. Extra check to see if there's a bike, pedestrian, or any parked cars. If there isn't, you go off brake, clutch coming up, and you go round the corner like that. And then when you are in that new road, and you've been successful in your turn, looking really nice and far ahead, you check your new road, new mirrors, and then you continue on to your next hazard.